This is Control Structure, episode 139 for January 24th, 2018. This is not a drill. It's a Dremel. <laughs> this show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs139 to see them. I am one of the hosts, Andrew Bailey, and with me this week is the other host, Stephen Orifice. Hello. Hi. So, um, yeah, we haven't received any complaints about our new format, so we're sticking with it. Okay, I guess no news is good news. Raspberry? 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 Raspberry! Do you have neighbors? No. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, we're still blowing out the levels, though. Okay, yes. So, uh, happy National Pie Day, Andrew. Why, happy Pie Day to you. It is uh, January 23rd today when we're recording this, and it is National Pie Day. Wait, I thought that was uh, March 14th. I don't know. I don't make this stuff up. I guess some guy had his birthday on the 23rd, and he's like, it's National Pie Day, and it's stuck. The, the, uh, the American Pie Cons- Consul-, Consul officially recognized it, and it was the way it was. Well... But that's one two three, not three one four. I don't know. We have to edit the Wikipedia page page and change it to make it right. I guess. I guess. Or or do you mean the dessert pie? The dessert pie. Uh, okay, that's good too. Either way. Uh, so apparently Alexa can help you talk to your pie now. Uh, there's a, a skill out there that you can use and be like Alexa. Ask Pie Sky what is pin two, and it will tell you those things. Where you can ask it where. GPIO pin 16 is, which my thought would be is probably next to 15. Probably. <laughs> Anyways, but uh, apparently someone wrote that skill. Right now it's only available in the UK, but he's hoping to have it available in the US here soon. Uh, another pie news. What do you think the NSA's top hacker would do for fun? Uh, spy on things. Maybe. Uh, in this case, he actually uh, uh, has a very elaborate... Uh, light set up at his house powered by Raspberry Pis. Uh, Rob Joyce is his name, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, uh, the story goes, uh, he says, I started after seeing with another house doing the same thing. And I said, I think I can do that to my wife. And uh, she said, yeah, sure. And I took that to mean, yes, you can. And then boxes of kit started arriving from China. So, uh, yeah, I guess he ordered in bulk LEDs from China. It says later on in the article that he got in with a group and ordered, like, gigantic bo- boxes of LEDs. So I guess that's the, the way you get, get LEDs if you need a bunch of them from China. I suppose. Pretty cheap. So, uh, you're enjoying a nice Saturday morning in Hawaii when your phone gets a message informing you of an incoming ballistic missile. And that this is not a drill. Oops. Uh, And oops, it turns out, because it was a false alarm caused by someone messing up on the uh, control panel at, like, whatever emergency center that they have out there. Um, So, and another thing is that the screenshot that that, uh, the government provided is (laughs) only a mock-up and is not the real screen that is used. Um, but apparently it is a drop-down with several vaguely named options. Um, so apparently the test, uh, ones are labeled, but the real ones are not. And they are, you know, even then, you know, some of them might not. They are labeled very inconsistently. So, and then, of course, this sparked off, you know, several you know, uh, designers and stuff, like, this could be done so much better, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) But, uh, you know, you can pretty much pick any one of them. On the other hand, your taxes are cheaper. Do you want more expensive taxes? That's always the trade-off. So not until 38 minutes after the warning went out did the state issue a correction. Uh, Children going down manholes, stores closing their doors to those seeking shelter, and cars driving at high speeds cannot happen again. Apparently, um, the governor forgot his Twitter password, and that was also why he didn't warn them sooner that it was a false alarm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, just make sure your things are designed, you know, properly and, well, maybe not, maybe not properly, but at least good enough 
that there is no question because in an emergency, um, people don't read everything. <laughs> it's true. Um, maybe even in a drill, people don't read everything. <laughs> in general, people don't read anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Amazon has announced the short list, uh, the top 20 cities for their second headquarters, uh, which includes Los Angeles, Denver, Dallas, Austin, Nashville, Chicago, Indianapolis, Columbus, Toronto, Boston, New York City, Newark, Philadelphia, uh, Washington, D.C., and, like, two other places right next to it. Uh, Raleigh, Atlanta, Miami, and Pittsburgh. Uh, n in no particular order, of course. Uh, it seems that the lines drawn across this map are very uh, inconsistent. Yeah, they're just kind of thrown up there. Like, hey, here it is. Uh, kind of like, you know, we're not sure if this is a drill city or a real city. <laughs> is Toronto, is that the only Canadian city? Uh, yes, that is the only one outside. That's, that's interesting that they were considering that. So, and of course they put up, you know, a nice page with all these stock images and stuff about, you know, about how, how many jobs and how much money they're going to throw at this place. So, um, yeah. Uh, they said that they will be announcing, uh, the, uh, final city at the end of the, uh, or at least by the end of the year. It seems like they've been doing this process for a long time. So, or, or rather, we expect to make a decision in 2018. Do you think they're just milking all the towns to try and get the best tax break possible? Oh, oh, you know that they are. You know. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I've also read a few other articles saying that, you know, uh, instead of, you know, collectively groveling, they should collectively bargain uh, Amazon saying is like, no, we're not going to like give you any kind of special tax breaks or anything. <laughs> so yeah, I wonder, <laughs> you know, exactly how how much you know these cities will flip over backwards for it. Interesting. It's uh, interesting when a business gets that big that they can do such things. Yeah. Uh, so you know, wine. Yes. You've you've used that uh, compatibility layer before. Yes, it's not an emulator, mind you. Yes, it is not an emulator. Uh, so Wine 3.0 has been released uh, with Direct 3D 10 and 11 support, uh, and also improved Direct Write and Direct 2D support. So now you can play a lot more games, uh, a lot more Windows games on Linux. Um... Let's see, you, you're hanging out on Linux all the time. Do you use Wine that often? I have used it to play World of Tanks. Uh, it lags quite a bit, but you are able to log into the game, and you are able to go into battle and shoot some of your allies by accident. <laughs> <laughs> um, and die a lot. And die a lot, yes. Presumably. Except it might take you a few seconds to know that you're dead, because, <laughs> well, you know... Sometimes the screen refresh rate isn't that great. <laughs> uh, that's basically the extent of recent uh, uh, wine usage. I did years back. I would use it a good bit more for programs and things. And it is, you know, a, a neat layer to be able to do that that type of thing. So, uh, remember last time uh, that Intel re uh, had some very nasty uh, privilege uh, issues? Yes, uh, I remember that Linus was very unhappy with Intel. Yes, and, well, everyone, pretty much. Uh, Linus, the other Linus, and maybe that one over there. <laughs> uh, and everyone with uh, AMD chips uh, were not as uh, disappointed. Uh, so Intel released some microcode to combat some of those issues, and turns out that it's buggy. In fact, it's so buggy that uh, Ubuntu is rolling it back. Huh. So, uh, Seems like someone was pushed a little too fast by his manager. You done yet? You done yet? You done yet? You done yet? Okay, okay, it's done! <laughs> uh, which, you gotta love uh, the version scheme going on here. You know, 3.20 blah 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 point zero plus really 2017.0707. That's probably, like, this is really the right fix. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, it's like, 
Granted, this version number seems to be incremented, but it's really the one from before. So, uh, yeah, hopefully things get uh, straightened out a little bit. But, uh, you know, with your Intel CPU slowing down, Firefox is getting faster, thankfully. Uh, so there's JavaScript, uh, but the sort of next generation scripting stuff is WebAssembly, which isn't necessarily something that you write because it's byte code that is often compiled from like C++ or something. So uh, it seems that Firefox has, uh, you know, or at least Mozilla has optimized the downloading and parsing and uh, like everything going on uh, behind the scenes uh, when it processes uh, WebAssembly. So essentially it breaks it up into, you know, different threads and moves it off of the main thread. Uh, so it, it seems like the, like the thing that they do is that the, you know, first compile is really fast, but the code is probably not optimal. But, you know, as it continues to execute, another thread, you know, does the really gritty work of compiling the really good stuff. And then when it's done, it swaps it out. I'm pretty sure this is the point in time where I say, you changed my brain. <laughs> yes, sort of. <laughs> but it's more like uh, swapping out, you know, it's like, oh, instead of using this drill, use this other one over here. Mm -hmm. uh, while Halfway through drilling the screw into the piece of wood. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> but, like, at least when you're finished screwing it in, you release the drill, and then it, then a new one just magically appears. There you go. The magic drill. <laughs> uh, uh, so, the good news is that you don't have to wait around for this, because it's in Firefox 58, and that is out now. So, go to your auto-updates for Firefox or uh, your local package manager, and uh, make sure you get this. Um, which also includes the improvements for off main thread painting, uh, which we talked about uh, a while back. Uh, so this is not the uh, was it the web render uh, stuff that uh, how should I say like draws the individual elements, then like puts it all into the page at once. Uh, that's not quite there yet, uh, but. Now, like, some of the rendering and compositing and stuff is off the main thread, so your scripts continu can continue to run, and your uh, scrolling will be silky smooth. So, you've heard of WPA2, right? It's the yes. Wi-Fi security standard. You know how long that's been around? Well, I, I read the article, and it said 10 years. Uh, more than that, really. Oh, really? Did I read it wrong? Uh, I think it's said 2004 or something. Oh, this is two decades. There we go. So it's actually 20 years then. Yeah. Mm, 2004 so wasn't 20 years ago. Well, it says, it says the standard will, will replace WPA2 and near two decade old security protocol. Nearly two decade old. Nearly. Okay. Nearly. <laughs> uh, so a lot of stuff has changed since then. Uh, but for some reason, WPA2 has held up fairly well and is still, like, unbreakable, uh, unless you have a very weak password. Uh, so WPA3 aims to mitigate some of the flaws, uh, and is apparently just a software update, and, or at least software update, uh, to most, uh, already installed equipment, so you can just, you know, flash your router and suddenly you got WPA3 functionality. Uh, something, and apparently this has CNSA encryption. CNSA? Really? <laughs> Are you serious? Well, uh, turns out that it is a suite of already widely used algorithms that are supposed to be resistant by to cracking by quantum computers. Uh, and as the name may tip you off to, it is a NSA approved thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, these are already algorithms that are proven. Uh, RSA, uh, 3072 bit or more. Uh, Diffie Hellman, 3072 bit or more. ECDH with NIST P2 
P-384, rather, uh, ECDSA with the same P-384, uh, Shaw-384, and AES-256. Uh, so these are, you know, encryption standards that are already widely used in, say, uh, HTTPS, uh, you know, the uh, web browser stuff. Um, and it also says you can't use these other weak uh, algorithms that have shorter keys. <laughs> so there is no word on like when these devices will hit the market, but presumably sometime this year, because uh, devices, you know, or how should I say, devices advertising this standard uh, were you know shown at CES, which you know was a few weeks ago already. So, like, you know, you know, that time, you know, you know, Christmas comes around and you get all your little gadgets and everything. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, these are the best. These are the best gadgets. <laughs> uh, and you're happy for about a week. And then, you know, New Year's comes around and the day after is CES. And that's like when all the new stuff comes out and, you know, it's like, oh, man, I just got, you know, uh, the current model, but then, you know, they're already showing off the next year's model or whatever. <laughs> so, so just for a week, you're happy with what you have. Only a week. <laughs> so have you sort of noticed how things kind of circle back around? So like, have you ever, you know, realized that, uh, you know, with all these server farms that they're really just mainframes it's but quite true. But like in a sort of you know different kind of clothing or in a different kind of marketing, yes. So, uh, you know, some this guy you know pretty much wrote up you know uh, this article here explaining that uh, we really haven't uh, how should I say progressed a whole lot uh, because of these. Excuse me about saying how. You know, because, you know, Google and Facebook in particular have all of our information that, you know, they are the keepers of, you know, these uh, server uh, rack mainframes or whatever he calls them. Uh, and that, uh, you know, tablets and cell phones and even desktop computers are really just dumb terminals. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, one thing that kind of hit me and I'm really ashamed that I haven't really thought of it before, is that this is why free and open source software will not help us. A software license touches on the software, but not on the human relationships which the software mediates. It is in those relationships that lock us into positions where Zuckerberg's foot is on our necks. In fact, it's open source that has enabled the web companies to bootstrap their startups so fast and cheap. It's open source that gave these web companies the flexibility to insinuate themselves as gatekeepers over our personal data. The open standards li that liberated the personal computer from IBM have enabled the new web companies to cheaply build their own mainframe substitutes, the main racks. Like their mid-century ancestors, they are large, centralized, and contain personal data at the mercy of organizations that only answer to shareholders and government bureaucrats. Open standards and open source were supposed to liberate us from the authority uh, and the need for authority. Instead, they have made it attractive for millions of people to fall over themselves to make the prodigal sons return back to the Holy Mother Church. Yeah, this is essentially why Stallman's crusade is not working. Because it's about the people. You know, like, he can go on and foam at the mouth over, you know, the uh, evils of proprietary software. You know, like, no one's going to stop using Facebook because of the ethics of software. Except for Stallman acolytes. <laughs> so, yeah. It's all about the people, man. And I also pulled out this other quote. You know, what I have not heard these activists say... What I advise is that we should second-guess ourselves as well as our masters. The point of this essay is that not only advancing technology that has recreated the mainframe and the abuses to which it is prone, the very desire for absolute freedom has done its part. 
the good intentions of our fellow nerds who promised to not be evil has brought us to this. So yeah, it's something to think about. This that whole essay is you know took me like half an hour to read. It's pretty long, but you know I kind of recommend that you read it. Okay, <laughs> is is that so hard to say, <laughs> Andrew? <laughs> if you uh, would like to send us any feedback, please do so on the Nexus TV. Uh, particularly if you're looking at the show notes, there's a link right there below our pretty faces. And don't forget that today is International Backup Awareness Day, so back up all your main racks. <laughs> I guess that's it. So, yeah, go back to your jobs and everything, right? Yep. So, and now for the thing that we do at the end of the show. <laughs> Unless you wanted to do something else at the end of the show. That's what we do at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs>